Simone! <laughs> Simone! <laughs> Welcome back, lads. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to reframe pleasure in your mind. Pleasure chasing. Because ever since I was younger, I've always chased pleasure. Ever since I could get my hands on the biscuit tin when I was younger, I'd run home from school before my mum could get back and I'd get in the house and I'd just sit there and I'd just bang, 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 bang. I'd just eat them cookies. I'd just eat those biscuits. I'd finish off the whole lot. And I'd do that all the time and I realised it was, for whatever reason, I, I think it's called being a dopaminergic um, personality. I, I chase dopamine, I've realised. My life's now set up in a way that allows me to do that productively. But before I didn't realise this and I had a dopaminergic personality and I've always chased pleasure. And recently I read something that really stuck out to me and allowed me to reframe pleasure in my mind. And the quote was, when we exceed the bounds of moderation, the greatest pleasures cease to please. And what this means is when you don't moderate your life, when you don't have any change, no matter how much you love something, if you do it all the time, if you do it to death, I call it, it will no longer please you. And you could, anyone who's been into drugs or alcohol will realise this. Maybe you get a great buzz on your first night, the second night you need more, the third night you need more, and after a while you're just using alcohol or drugs to feel normal again. And that works with pretty much anything you can overdo, whether it be a woman that you're in love with. You see her every day and then suddenly you're sick of her. She used to be your greatest pleasure, and now just through having no moderation in your life, the greatest pleasure ceases to please. So I really like that. And the way you retrain your mind, you reframe this, is that pleasure or good feelings don't exist without bad feelings and struggle. So if you don't go through any hardship, you cannot feel good anyway. So the perpetual chase of pleasure is completely pointless because you know it's going to run out, because you know it will never fulfill you. And the only things that do fulfill you are the things that are hard. They're the things that actually lead to internal peace, which is what you want much more than pleasure. So the reframe that you have to do on your mind is that pleasure doesn't actually exist. What I think pleasure is, is actually going down like a fake, t it's like being led down a fake path, being led astray to a path where at the end there is no joy, there's no pleasure, there's nothing. It actually sucks out your soul. And when you begin to frame pleasure like this and stop thinking about it like, oh yes, now I get to drink, now I get to do this, I'm going to feel happy. Realise that all of those pursuits are fruitless and the only thing that's going to bring you lasting inner peace is becoming the best version of yourself by sticking to your daily disciplines. And eventually you'll get to a point, and, th and this is a wonderful thing, the more disciplined you become in your life, the harder you make your life, the harder your workout, the earlier your wake up time, the harder you work on your business, the more pleasure you derive from the simplest things. Now you might be able to see behind me, actually I'll bring it over for you. This is the beginning of Lego Hogwarts, which is going to be absolutely gymungous when it's finished. But the point of that Lego is, I used to be able to not get pleasure from 10 beers and a line of gear because I'd done it so much. I now get more pleasure from building a little bit of Lego every night because of the way I've reframed my mind, because I make my daily life so disciplined, so structured, and so difficult on most days, that just sitting down, I sit down with a, with a girl I'm dating at the moment, beautiful girl, and we just sit down, we make some Lego together, the two of us. Which sounds, if you told me I was gonna do that at 18 years old, I would have been like, Jack, you're fucking, you're a Fruit Loop, mate. But now, <laughs> now it brings me so much joy, and, and I think, for most people that are looking for that feeling of happiness, that feeling of fulfillment, it's never fucking found in all the fun things. It's never found in the vacation at the end. It's never found with the, at the light at the end of the road. It is chasing that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that never exists. But what is really fucking fun is doing very hard work all day, working yourself to the bone, and then at the end of the day just having a nice activity that you allow yourself to enjoy. You can sit down and enjoy a movie and if you enjoy a movie at the end of a hard day of work it can surpass the pleasure of many things that you previously got pleasure from in the past but same with like if you play video games every day that was maybe once your greatest pleasure but it quickly becomes a nightmare 
when you do it over and over again. If I woke up and smoked weed and watched movies, I would no longer enjoy movies. If I woke up and smoked weed and just made Lego all day, I would no longer enjoy Lego. So the reframe for your mind is that actually the things you think are fun don't exist without the hard work. The vacation's not fun without the hard work. The money's not fun without the hard work. Everybody puts this final prize. They're like, one day I'm not going to have to do anything. One day I can just relax on the beach. I'll tell you right now, you relax on the beach for two weeks, I've done it. I've relaxed on the beach, plenty of money in the bank, no need to work. And after those two weeks, any man, any real man is itching to get going again. Because the only thing you'll ever find a lasting fulfillment is, is the progression of yourself and your personality and your spirituality and who you are as a man. So lads, I hope that's helped. Before we finish, I got a great new uh, care package from my, from my sponsor, Top Shelf Grind. They restocked us with the Kingmaker testosterone supplement. Uh, has pretty much everything you need for testosterone boosting. I take this daily. Alpha Grind, break the simulation. This is a crazy fucking coffee, blow your head off coffee. I've talked about it before. Take it twice, you know, three times a week maximum, because it is really for those mega boosts. You don't want to take that past 12 o'clock in the afternoon, trust me. You will not be sleeping for a couple of days. And then here's a new one, which I actually haven't tried yet. I just got this delivery today. It's called Alpha Grind PM. Embrace your dreams. And I do have a little bit of trouble sleeping, so I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna trial this out, and I'll let you guys know how it is and, and let you know what it's like as a sleep supplement. And then we've also got King Dip. You might have seen these little packs hanging around. They're normally snus, and that's like a nicotine patch. These don't have any nicotine in, but they're something you put in your gum. I've got one in now. And these ones have just got like, um, what are they called? Nootropics and caffeine in. So they're like a little caffeine pill, a little caffeine buzz. King Dip, feel pretty buzz, pretty awake right now, so the King, King Dip's cool. Um, but yeah, they're my stuff. That's my stuff from Top, top Shelf Grind. So yeah, thanks to Robert Oliver for sending me those. Robert Oliver's my good buddy and um, he, he's the owner of Top Shelf. Guys, go and check that out in the link below if you're interested in supplements or that sort of stuff. And have a great fucking day. See you in the next one. Whoop